Sup, Kimosabi? This is Leon, the Paperback Maniac, coming at you with a very special video for Movie Mayhem this month. We are going to be taking a look at my collection of Fangoria magazines. Yes, I am an avid fan of Fango. Uh, I, although I've only been collecting for the past couple of years, but it's just um, one of those magazines that's like comfort food to me. In fact, uh, there is nothing I like better uh, to do on a Saturday morning than wake up, make a cup of coffee, uh, sit on my couch, and crack open one of these old issues. It's like the closest thing to stepping in a time machine and going back to you know that period, 1986, 1987. I love everything about it. I love the ads. You know, I love the old uh, you know the VHS ads, the the theatrical uh, promotions. The many, many amazing columns they had, like uh, the video eye of Dr. Cyclops, where they feature, you know, what's uh, coming out on VHS, or of course, Nightmare Library, where they would review the most recent horror titles. Uh, and that, and that part, uh, that column in particular, uh, has, you know, alerted me to so many um, books that I may not have uh, discovered otherwise. So. It's just an amazing magazine, and I thought, why not celebrate it, especially in light of the fact that uh, Fango is having an imminent resurrection. Uh, they are coming back this fall, and uh, I know I've, I've already got my subscription to that, so um, yeah, super pumped for that as well. But yeah, without further preamble, let's take a look at my Fangos. Um, oh, by the way, uh, here's another one of those ugly mugglies. Uh, uh, I have, uh, you know, like a set of these. That's a uh, blister tongue right there. Isn't, isn't he just adorable? Okay. So these are in chronological order. I hope I didn't mess it up. Uh, the first issue that I have is issue number 49. And uh, this came out in November of 1985. And of course, uh, the first of many uh, covers of the magazine to feature everyone's favorite pizza-faced supernatural slasher, Freddy Krueger. Yes, uh, he was uh, literally the poster child for Fangoria and probably was to Fango what Ronald McDonald was to <laughs> McDonald's. But um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. You know, Freddy's Revenge, uh, cheesy sequel, but, but I kind of like it. On the back, um, one of these cool ads, you know, you got this. Is, these are for some VHS uh, tapes of Dr. Gore and Blood Cult, a couple of old... Uh, gore films from the 70s 70s or early 80s um and the cool thing about fango at least you know for the earlier issues is they always had they always had a a poster that you could you know if you wanted you could hang this up on your wall and i'm sure a lot of people in the 80s uh kids especially had their uh these posters on their wall there's uh from fright night uh <laughs> Little okay, quick story about Fright Night. So actually, just last night, uh, I went. My brother and I went to a repertory screening of Fright Night. Uh, it was playing at the uh, Frida Cinema in Santa Ana, California. Here, and um, Tom Holland, the writer and director, uh, my one of my personal heroes, was in attendance, and he actually did a Q and A after uh, the show, which was amazing. But uh, before the movie began, uh, I got up to uh, go to the concession stand. And in a typical Larry David move, uh, a typical example of just me being completely oblivious, uh, as I'm walking to the concession stand, completely just like unaware of my surroundings, I blithely walk in front of Tom Holland as he's about to have his picture taken with the co-founder of the theater, completely photobomb them in inadvertently. And as soon as I walk by and, the, you know, the cameraman kind of like, He's all pissed off. I look over at Tom. I notice him, and he, you know, he's kind of smiling. I, he, he finds it kind of funny. Uh, the co-founder of the Frida was a little less amused, um, but I just, I was so embarrassed. I just said, "Oh, God, Tom, I'm so sorry." But uh, yeah, it was that was my one uh, interaction uh, with with Tom Holland, the great man who uh, directed Fright Night and Child's Play and uh, some other a number of other things. But anyway, yeah, the, the screening was amazing, by the way. Uh, seeing that on the big screen was a real treat. Okay, uh, my next issue is issue number 50, and this is from January of 86. Again, uh, we've got uh, Mr. Kruger on there doing his thing. And um, on the back... See, this is the kind of shit I love. There's an ad for Godzilla 1985. Super cool. 
uh, let's see what else. I can't, I'm not going to go into like every one of these. Like this video would be five hours long, but, um, oh God, look at this. Okay. Look at this. Here's a poster, uh, from uh, reanimator. Isn't that lovely? Reanimator is one of my favorite, uh, splat stick, uh, splatter comedies of all time, but that's pretty cool. But, um, yeah, just like a really fun, like, okay, look at this. Like, Nightmare Library, they have a full spread on Ted Klein's The Ceremonies. Like, where do you get that, you know, nowadays? You, you don't. Like, it's just amazing. So it had a little something for everyone, you know. It obviously had all the film coverage, um, the amazing set visits, you know, amazing color photos like that. I mean, like, what's not to love, right? Just incredible. Okay, uh, the next issue I have is issue number 51. And this is from January of 1986. I have this one in the cellophane still because this, this one uh, is kind of falling apart. Actually, uh, the things I go for you guys, I, I actually had filmed this video for like like over 10 minutes and then realized that it doesn't look as good uh, when I had, I had all my magazines in these plastic cases, but um, yeah, I, I decided to, to take them out of there uh, to make it look better. But there's the back, very cool. Okay, next one we've got here is uh, issue number 53. This is from May of 1986. That's pretty cool. And then on the back we have um, just some random, just some random ads. This one's got an article, uh, How to Write Horror, J.N. Williamson's Tips on Terror. So for all you uh, aspiring uh, horror writers out there, although it may be arguable uh, whether <laughs> it, taking J.N. Williamson's advice is, is uh, worthwhile. But um, yeah, here we've got a poster of uh, good old uh, Jason Voorhees. Yeah, poor guy. Okay. Okay, next issue we got is issue number 58. This is from October of 1986. Featuring uh, the fly, one of my favorite creature features of all time, not just the 80s. Um, oh, and I love, I love this, uh, I love this ad for demons there. <laughs> what an amazing ad. I mean, if this were, if I was around and I was like reading this magazine back then and I saw this, I would be all over this movie. Like, just, just so cool. So cool. They really don't do advertising like that anymore. Okay, next up, we've got issue number 59. This is from December of 1986, okay, featuring uh, From Beyond, uh, another one of my favorite uh, kind of horror films of, of that period. Absolutely love Stuart Gordon. He's amazing. On the back, we get a cool, uh, cool ad for Vamp, which was another fun uh, kind of vampire horror comedy. Uh, nowhere near as good as Fright Night, but but it was, you know, it's pretty fun. Let's see what this one's got. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's a, there's a poster for The Fly. You know, you throw put that up on your uh, bedroom wall. That'd be nice to wake up to every day. And, um, yeah, man, just super, super cool, um, super cool segments. Like, look, okay, here... They feature, and like they would often feature uh, writers. Like here, they feature the the author John Coyne. I've got other ones where they feature like you know Skip Inspector, um, John Saul. Just uh, just a lot of fun. Okay, next up we got issue number sixty three. This is from May of eighty seven, with uh, Evil Dead two, probably the uh, the ne plus ultra of uh, horror comedies. I mean, one that, you know, does it right, like really good. Here's the back. We've got some, uh, some masks. They were always advertising, you know, some sort of like makeup or masks or things like that, but super cool. I love, I love these things too. Like I love that. I think that's an ad for laser disc or something of the fly, but like these old ads are just like super cool. And, um, what's that? Oh, that's the dude, Sammy Kerr, I think, from Trick or Tree. That was a fun little uh, kind of Halloween slasher. Okay. Next up, we've got issue number 64. 
This is from June of uh, 1987, again, featuring uh, Mr. Freddy Krueger, of course. Uh, I think this one uh, had a pretty cool uh, profile of uh, the Splatterpunk authors, uh, Skip and Spectre, which is, um, which is always fun to read about them. But, uh, yeah, oh man, look at that. Poster from, uh, from Beyond, absolutely amazing. You can definitely see where uh, James Gunn got the in, uh, inspiration for uh, his movie Slither, which was also a fun um, kind of uh, 80s throwback uh, horror comedy. But yeah, really, really fun stuff. You know, as I said, I, I when I read these things, um, it's just like going back in time. You know, it's just like going back and, um, you know, just like seeing all this stuff like, how they promote the old back issues. Like you really feel like you're in 1987. And you know, they've got the, you know, just cool articles here. I, Freddy, right? Just like stuff like that. It just brings me joy. It just makes me happy. Okay, next up, we've got issue number 66. This one was from August of 1987. And uh, The Lost Boys, another great great uh, horror kind of comedy, I guess. Um, that one was, was was pretty cool. What do we got here? Okay, there's a there's a poster from Evil Dead 2. I gotta stop. I can't show all these posters. Like, this is gonna just take too long. But um, yeah, just fun, fun, uh, fun stuff. I love the, um, the, like, okay, here, like an article on the Monster Squad. Like, who wouldn't want to read that, right? I mean, just just really cool. I keep saying that a lot. I feel like I just keep saying it's fun or it's cool. Um, okay, next up, we've got issue number 67. This is from September of 1987. And that's a, that's a striking image, right? Uh, this is from Hellraiser, uh, one of the best, uh, one of the absolute best and substantive uh, uh, horror novels. Um, Clive Barker can do no wrong. Absolutely love it. And uh, really cool. Like here we got an advertisement for some old shirts. Like how awesome would that be to like have, you know, these old like vintage shirts like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. That's super cool. Okay, next up we've got issue number 69. This is from December of 1987. Featuring uh, John Carpenter's uh, Prince of Darkness, uh, a movie that I like a lot. I think it's uh, very underrated uh, in Mr. Carpenter's oeuvre, oeuvre I guess. Uh, really cool um, Lovecraftian and just odd and cerebral and melty and goopy uh, horror novel that kind of makes you think. I, 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 I dig it a lot. And I guess it's pretty apropos that uh, on the back we have an ad for the film with pretty lame poster art. I mean, no wonder this movie bombed. I mean, that's not, uh, that's not the most effective, uh, I think artwork to sell the movie, but, uh, okay. Next up, we've got issue number 70. Uh, this is from January of 1988. This is features a uh, pumpkin head, um, cool little, uh, folkloric kind of, uh, horror store, horror, uh, movie, uh, directed by Stan Winston, the effects genius. May he rest in peace. Okay. On the back, we got a cool, uh, cool ad for house or is that, oh, that's house two, the second story. <laughs> Love that subtitle. Um, house two, a lot of people hate on that one for just being really ridiculous and like overly comedic. I kind of like house two if I'm being honest, but, um, yeah. Okay. Here, another cool, um, another cool ad. There's a Return of the Living Dead 2, obviously completely ripping off the Fright Night poster, but really cool poster anyway. Um, the film is, you know, not anywhere near as good as the first Return of the Living Dead. And, uh, oh, there we go. That is, uh, that's amazing. Hellraiser. If you've seen the movie The Void, you'll notice that that looks a little familiar. They were clearly uh, quite influenced by, by Hellraiser. Yeah, just... Um, Let's see, anything else cool here? <laughs> I mean, just the stuff that they feature like that. Like, just, that's awesome. I mean, what, what else can I say, right? I mean, I can't like, 
you know, get too academic about this, right? Like there's no need. And then here is, um, here's Nightmare Library. Yeah, this is probably my favorite segment. I mean, look, they review like Ramsey Campbell. Like, it's just, it's just great. Okay, next one I've got is issue number 71. And this is from February of uh, 1988, featuring a cellar dweller, kind of a cheesy uh, 80s horror movie. And on the back, we've got a gorgeous uh, ad for Hellraiser. I absolutely, absolutely love that. Super cool. Okay, next we've got issue number 72. Uh, this one is from March of 1988. And uh, Bad Dreams, that's one of the better uh, Freddy ripoffs of the 80s. That was uh, clearly uh, taking a page from Nightmare 3 because it took place in a hospital and it's got this kind of burned, kind of boogeyman type figure. But if you haven't seen Bad Dreams, it's actually a pretty good movie. And the ending definitely uh, uh, is surprising, kind of takes you off guard, catches you off guard, I should say. But uh, here we got a poster for The Howling. That's pretty cool. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I want to show you guys some some stuff from these pages, but I don't know why. So, you know, they just got these features. Like, they just do like a write-up, like a set visit from Poltergeist 3. And the thing is, like, when I read these, like, articles, especially the set visits, um, if I haven't seen the movie, they really do a good job of, like, piquing my interest. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, I'm super excited to see this. A lot of the times, though, if it's a film I never heard about – um, and I get super pumped to see it from reading Thango. Uh, after watching the movie, I then realize, uh, okay, there's probably a reason I had never heard of that. <laughs> but it's still it's still interesting to like have that sense of discovery of you know stuff that you just didn't know existed, right? That's like why I have this whole channel. I mean, the the hunt, right? The hunt for that unknown book or unknown movie. It's just uh, very exhilarating. Okay, next one, uh, issue number seventy three. This is from May of nineteen eighty eight. Uh, featuring Dead Heat. I've talked about that movie before on this channel. Just an absolutely ridiculous kind of genre mishmash. Uh, really, really a fun one. Um, the back just has a typical uh, kind of uh, masks or whatever they are. Um, so, okay, here we have a, an ad for Gore Zone magazine, of which I am also a fan. And let's see. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Brain Damage, Frank Hennenlauter. I love that. Let's see if there's anything else in here worth uh, worth showing you guys. Oh man, see like Nightmare Library. They're reviewing Guy and Smith. Like that is just, I love that. I love that. I mean, honestly though, like the Nightmare Library, their taste is quite, they usually, um, they usually shit on a lot of the, the books that I have affection for, but that's beside the point. It doesn't matter, right? Um, there's some uh, photos from Dead Heat when they did their set visit. I mean, you like if I were reading this again, I would just be super pumped to, to see this movie. Like they really did their job well of uh, you know selling the fans on the stuff. Okay, next up, uh, this one is issue number seventy five from July of nineteen eighty eight. Uh, featuring, you know, it's probably the best scene from Phantasm 2, uh, where the tall man starts melting at the end. Super cool. Yeah, a lot of them have the same uh, same back cover. Okay, and then afterwards, uh, here we've got issue number 76 from August 1988, Fright Night Part 2. There's a lot of uh, love for Fright Night Part 2. I just, I don't know, I can't get into it. I feel like I should. I feel like it's a movie that I should like, but every time I try to watch it, I just, I don't know, it's just not, it's just not the, as good as the original. I mean, it tries to, to mimic the original, but um, I'm just, I'm not the biggest fan of Fright Night Part 2. I just have to, I just have to come to terms with that, I guess. Oh yeah, there's a little ad on the back. You know, a lot of Fango readers are probably uh, nascent uh, makeup effects people or wannabes. Okay, next up, we've got issue number 77 from September 1988. We're back to uh, our mascot of the magazine, Mr. Freddy Krueger. That's pretty cool. 
And then the back is just like ads for um, I don't know, just random magazines. Okay, next up, we've got issue number 78. This is from October of 1988, featuring uh, Hellbound, Hellraiser 2, uh, a great sequel to a great film. I'm loving that. Okay, then we've got issue number 79. This is from December of 1988, featuring uh, Michael Myers in Halloween 4. And then uh, next we've got issue number 80. This is from February of 1989. Move over, Freddy. There's a new guy on the block. I'm Madman. <laughs> Didn't quite work out the way they wanted, though. That's kind of funny. And then uh, cool ads on the back. All right. Next up, we've got Issue number 86 from September of 1989, uh, featuring Nightmare 5. Probably one of the worst sequels. Um, I'd probably say Freddy's Dead is, is the worst sequel, but this one is it's a close second. Although the uh, effects were amazing, and I do like the, uh, I do like the dream child, the way he, the way he looks. But um, yeah, not, the, not, not Freddy's best moment. Um, okay. We're almost done with the first pile here. Uh, this is issue number 87 from October of 1989. And we got Robert England uh, in a different role, <laughs> wearing slightly different latex. Uh, Phantom of the Opera. That was one of those movies that um, I remember uh, seeing the VHS cover back in the day in the video store. It had this really sort of striking and haunting cover. And... Um, I just thought it, it must have been like the most terrifying movie of all time, just based on that VHS cover. But uh, yeah, <laughs> see, just this is the kind of stuff I love. That this is actually I did, I didn't know that this movie actually even went to the theaters. Phantom of the Mall, a complete cheese fest, um, super fun. What do we got here? That's uh, oh from the Sentinel. That's lovely. Yeah. Is there anything else of note in here? Nightmare Library. They got a review of uh, Michael Slade's Ghoul. That's one I need to get to, actually. I've, I've heard a lot of good things about Michael Slade. Should probably review him soon on the channel. But uh, there we go. So there's a little article on the Phantom of the Opera. <clears throat> okay. Okay. We're getting into the 90s now, folks. Uh, here we got issue number 90 from February of 1990, featuring uh, Clive Barker's Nightbreed. Uh, sadly, you know, this was his ambitious uh, follow-up to Hellraiser. He was going to, it was going to be like the Star Wars uh, for monsters. And he was going to like, you know, he was creating this whole universe and he wanted it to be like a franchise or I think he was planning a trilogy. Sadly, uh, the movie totally tanked and we never got any sequels, but, um, you know, Nightbreed, it's not one of my favorite of Clive Barker's films, but it, but it is interesting, especially seeing uh, David Cronenberg uh, play the villain in that. Uh, that. That's a lot of fun. And on the back here, we have um, ads for more, uh, more magazines, uh, Gore Zone, Toxic Horror. I love all that stuff. Okay, next up, we've got issue number 91. This is from April of 1990, featuring Bride of Reanimator. Some uh, pretty cool effects in that one. And uh, this is cool on the back. We get an ad for Basket Case 2. Frank Hammond, more Frank Hammond Lauder goodness. Okay. Next up, uh, we've got issue number 92 from uh, May of 1990. We've got Tales from the Dark Side, the movie there. That's a pretty cool anthology. I actually like that. Um, oh, here's the, here's the poster. And that, 
that's the theatrical poster. I remember uh, when this was playing in the theater, actually. It's weird what you remember, right? Like from being a kid. I remember like being in the lobby of a movie theater, I guess in 1990, and uh, seeing like a huge poster, or it might even been like a standee of this movie, and just kind of being mesmerized by it, I guess, a little kid. But yeah, fun, fun little anthology. Don't know why that's not on Blu-ray. I wish it was. Um, okay, next up, we've got issue number 93. This is from June of 1990, featuring uh, Gremlins 2, The New Batch. This is a fun one. Total Friday night pizza movie. Um, <laughs> and if anyone is a fan of this movie and you haven't seen the Key and Peele skit of like the kind of like the the boardroom or like the the studio um, session where they're kind of throwing out ideas for this movie. It's absolutely hilarious. I highly recommend you guys check that out. Okay, next up, we've got issue number 94, and this is from July of 1990. And let's see what we got on the back here. Oh, guys, Dick Tracy. <laughs> Does anyone remember that movie? That movie was such a big deal. There was so much merchandise. Like, there was, like, watches. I think I had a Dick Tracy watch. I might have had a T-shirt, too. There was so much. Like, they, had, they pushed it so hard, and now no one talks about that movie at all. It's like it, like, evaporated from the, you know, cultural consciousness. <laughs> it's very interesting. Yeah. All right. Next up, uh, this is issue number 95 from August of 1990. Very appropriate that Total Recall should grace uh, one of the covers of Fangoria, seeing as this is one of the goriest uh, films of the 90s, even though it's an action movie. I mean, my God, Paul Verhoeven. Um, I recently, I, I watched this recently and like the, the elevator scene where Schwarzenegger's like making his escape and he's using these like, Poor innocent civilians as like human shields and just like fistfuls of like tissue are just being ripped out of them as like the, the bad guys are trying to get at Schwarzenegger and he's just ducking behind these these civilians. It's, it's hilarious. Absolutely, uh, absolutely a, a blast though. And uh, there's the back. All right. Uh, next, we've got issue number ninety eight from November of nineteen ninety. In my novelization uh, video, I talked about my my affection for Child's Play 2, and um, so that's uh, that's pretty cool. And then the back, just um, yeah, makeup makeup ads. All right, and then uh, next we've got issue number 104. Uh, this is from July of '91, of course, when T2 had come out and uh, was the king. Uh, great. Great film, right? Obviously. Um, on the back, oh, this is pretty cool. On the back, we've got these like, I guess they're like models for Dark Man and Darkness from Legend. I wonder, like, yeah, I wonder what these would go for today if if they if people still had them. I mean, those are cool collectors. I mean, even back then, it was expensive. All right. Next up, we've got uh, issue number 105 from August of 1991. Now, this movie here, Body Parts, severely underrated, and just no one talks about this movie, but I think it's fantastic. Honestly, it's like one of my favorite horror movies of the 90s. Uh, great, great movie starring the the, the wonderful Jeff Fahey. Um, you know, if, if you guys haven't seen Body Parts, Definitely seek it out. It, it is a it is a gem in my opinion. Okay, another gem here. Uh, next, uh, we've got issue number one hundred six. This is from uh, September of nineteen ninety one. Uh, Cast a deadly spell. This was an old um, an HBO original uh, film and uh, really interesting. It's like a noir, uh, kind of like a noir gumshoe movie meets uh, Lovecraft with like Lovecraftian monsters. And uh, really, really just well done and entertaining. It's another one of those movies that doesn't have a, like a release. Like, I don't even think there's a DVD of it. Certainly not a Blu-ray. I wish, I wish there were. I, I think HBO doesn't like to license their stuff out, um, which is unfortunate. 
And then here on the back, oh, this is hilarious. So um, T2, the telephone challenge. <laughs> so you could call this number and uh, you know, you'd have to probably slip your mom's credit card out of her purse and they charge you lots of money, but you could like, you know, I guess talk to a recording. I, I remember uh, Nightmare on Elm Street also had a, a phone line that you could call like a 1-900 number, and they, which would be like really expensive. But um, yeah, those are, those are fun. Okay, next up we've got issue number 108. Uh, this is from November of 1991 featuring The People Under the Stairs, uh, one of Wes Craven's most underrated uh, films. Really, really good one. One that I actually didn't like the first time I saw it, but I've really come around on it, and uh, I think it's one of his best. I mean, just really well done and uh, great social commentary. Um, the back, cool here, we've got uh, an ad for Puppet Master 3. Uh, that's one that's a lot of people's favorites, uh, I think, of the Puppet Master series. Okay, next up, we've got issue number 111. This is from April of 1992, featuring, uh, I don't care what anyone says, man. Uh, Sleepwalkers, I love this movie. It is so hilariously cheesy. And the thing that I find most fascinating about it is that it was, it is actually uh, based on, not based on a Stephen King story, it's like an original screenplay he wrote, and he's got the only credit. No one else rewrote it. it. Everything that you see in this film came directly from him, and that blows my mind because there's like one-liners in this thing that like King didn't normally write. Like he didn't, he wasn't known for having cheesy one-liners, but uh, I mean, it reads more like um, like an adaptation of like a zebra, <laughs> like a grade Z zebra paperback not a stephen king i mean i don't know what he was smoking or, or what he was drinking or snorting but i mean i thank god he did it because it's, it gives me so much joy and so much like entertainment value okay uh we are down to the last uh, like few here um this is issue number 112 from may of 1992 featuring uh, hellraiser 3 pretty cool pretty cool image there And then we've got issue number 113. This is from June of 1992. And uh, talking about cheesy movies, okay, here's an ad for Scanners 3, The Takeover. Oh my God, this thing, uh, it, hilarious. This movie is just so ridiculously cheesy, but it just, it brings a smile to my face. I just absolutely love it. Uh, I, I have this on a, Screen Factory actually put out a, uh, a double disc of scanners two and three. Three is definitely uh, the gem there. I mean, two <laughs> two is good, uh, it's fun, but uh, three is the, the one that's really funny. Okay, next up, we've got issue number 114. This is from July of 1992. And um, on the back here, we got a cool uh, ad for a full moon movie, Seed People. I love those old... Uh, full moon covers from like the early 90s. <clears throat> All right, next, issue number 115. This is from August of 1992, featuring uh, Army of Darkness, Brain Dead, one of the, you know, probably the ultimate, I, keep, I probably said that before, right? <laughs> but, but I mean, Brain Dead is one of the ultimate splatter movies of all time. Okay, two more here, guys, if you're still there. Hang in there. Um, issue number 121. Uh, this is from April of uh, 93. And Jesus, I mean, uh, this is from the dark half uh, from a Stephen King novel directed by George Romero. I haven't seen that movie in a while. I don't remember it being that grisly. I mean, that picture is, is quite, uh, quite graphic. But... Um, on the back here, we've got another full moon ad. I like this movie, Arcade. This is kind of like a fun, uh, cheesy, like so early 90s. Um, but uh, good good times there. And the last one I have, guys. This is issue number 132 from May of 1994, featuring another one of my favorite 90s horror movies, Brain Scan. I just have a lot of fond memories of this. Um, 
super, super cool. <laughs> the trickster was a great uh, antagonist, obviously like a Freddy Krueger wannabe, but um, very fun movie. So I had to get that. And there's um, there's an ad for the laser disc. Is that what it is? Or no, video cassette of um, arcade. Cool cover, right? So yes, oh, man, 35 minutes. Yeah, well, that was uh, my uh, Fangoria video, uh, Fangoria collection video. So um, hope you guys enjoyed that. You know, if you're a fan of Fangoria, um, you know, and uh, yeah, so that, uh, that, that's it. You know, if you liked this video, uh, I am going to have a similar video uh, next week toward the end of the month to kind of close out Movie Mayhem. I promise it won't even be close to this long, but uh, keep an eye out for that. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Keep a lookout for another review. It should be coming up soon. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.